next meeting is being recorded. It is, yeah. Lunar Light Entertainment proudly presents the 100-Day Magical Challenge, Pathways of the Magi. Greetings and salutations, wizards, warriors, wanderers, and wayfarers alike. Welcome to the Frank Monday channel. It's been a while since we've been able to tune in and have a conversation here on the platform, but it's just due to the fact that, you know, everyone knows I'm in Beijing, China, and there's a bit of a bamboo wall between me and the rest of the world. So with no further ado, we've been working our way through the element of water and the suit of cups in the minor arcana and this is the 100 day challenge pathways of the magi today i've got uh, the pleasure to be in the company of freighter tomas and uh, we are going to discuss a little bit of the gains and losses in moving our way through the minor arcana of the cups cards so tomas how are you today man <laughs> Thanks for having me here. Yeah, I'm doing very well. Um, it's been a such a wonderful journey. We are 50 days in. No, 40 days in. Yeah, Sorry, 40 bit. days in yeah. here. And um, that means that we are past the three, um, past the one third mark. My math is all messed Absolutely. up. I don't yes. know why. Yeah. Um, We're a third of the way it, through. A third of the way through, uh, plus a few days. Those recurring and, threes, right? Yeah. Yes. I have a joke in my book. Remember I told you that one of my goals uh, during this channel, channel uh, challenge um, is to finish my book. I'm writing a novel. Yeah, and, uh, that's I right. I have a little that's joke right. about 333 three, three in my book there. Um, the the point I'm, I, I'm trying to make is that once 40 days in with oh the cup with daily rituals daily adorations prayers kabbalistic cross uh, lbrp and um, my first experiments in creating my own rituals once you become very familiar with the basic uh, structure of uh, a banishing or an invocation ritual uh, you can take that to the next level, I would say. And for me, it's it's been um, it's been a very sobering experience because I've had to think quite deeply about what am I letting into my life, and what am I uh, right. determined to to diminish uh, the hold on my life? Because uh, although I'm working as a hypnotherapist, and the subconscious is is what I spend a lot of time on. Um, it's it's still not something that you can fully control, right? Um, right. So in order to create these rituals that build yourself up, that you know sharpen you a little bit, I find a a lot of little blessings have come my way, you know. And I daily I'm working on my book, uh, daily I'm doing my rituals, contemplating the tarot, and that daily practice um is healthy i mean i really like that you know awesome that's really good um one of the things i've noticed is since we've shift our focus to the emotional level and um we're contemplating <clears throat> the cups minor arcana as it were uh i've realized on more than one level like my own insecurities and fears and i have really had to take a look and think well look try to look to origins like why am i feeling that way and one of the things i've battled with throughout my life really is depression and ennui and some angst in the world right like the mm the idea that the world is conspiring against me, right? You know, it's intentionally setting up bottlenecks and obstacles. And some of these obstacles I've overcome, like there's, there's definitely gains and losses. Like if I make a step forward and then I get pushed three steps back. And when that happens, I get on my guard and, you know, I'm like, I'm ready to fight. And so overcoming my own emotional instability and my tendency to use gallows humor to um, address some of the more um, just insurmountable obstacles in life. For one example, in today's 
world scene there are many conflicts going on and one mm. of them specifically relates to um, i i don't know in some sense my own gene pool right like people will look at me and they, they they've they've directly asked me are you one of the enemy and i'm like yeah of course i am you know i'm what, what am i supposed to say am i to deny god in the in the face of a challenge and it's like well um we we've we've late recently we've generated a lot of anti-devil sentiment and it's like well if, if you're wearing the horns of the devil then um you may become a target of our of our focus and it's like well you know that's neither here nor there that does not matter what truly matters is that i give forth a positive effort at all times and climb the ladder you know and go through whatever challenge may be in front of me without letting my slip self without letting myself slip back into that um ennui like i woke up this morning i was experiencing a great deal of fear and loathing that i had brought out of dreamland and i thought well why is that and it's like well you may just be exposing yourself to too much screen time and taking in too much of that irrelevant information that mm. at the end of the day, it really doesn't affect your, your own day-to-day -day calculations. And so I think that it's extremely important to be wary of that, like mm. to be at, at least to be aware of it and know mm. that these um, psychic impressions may not be from anything you're doing per se or any of the unrelated um, things without say, stating them directly, you know what I mean? But um, it's definitely been a challenging climb up the cups cards. If, if we go through them one by one, we have some really highs and lows, you know, like we have the really great experience all the way up to the, 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 the five, a little bit of disillusionment. There's a foreshadowing of it. And then the six kind of redeems you. And, um, the, the seven may beguile you, but then the eight sends you off on your journey. And it's like, is it time that you abandon those things? Is it time that you move on so that you can mm. receive the reward of the nine and 10, right? And uh, so that's where I got stuck this morning on the eighth transition in the minor arcana. How, how, and uh, But I'm almost all the way through. I've got days nine and 10. I'm a, a day off on my calculations and you guys might be one day behind me as well. So mm. you might be nearing the, what is it? The finalization of the minor arcana before we start on the last four uh, mm. court cards. Well, during my own uh, journey, my own experience here during the, the cups, which um, I always felt that this was a feminine energy. Um, so I looked Absolutely. deeper yeah. into my own past Right, you're talking about God and whatnot. Uh, I've spent a lot of time studying uh, old Norse mythology. I'm Swedish, so Viking blood and all of that. So, uh, um, in terms of the uh, invocations that I've been doing, I've included uh, Freya. You know, Freya is a goddess of beauty. She's on the cusp of life and death, fertility. Um, so she is earth and wet and fertility and beauty, uh, a powerful figure. And uh, in my own invocation rituals, as I'm talking about creating your own rituals, she's now a central figure in that. And that has calmed the waters a little bit for me, because if I'm looking at where I'm going with these rituals and how I'm creating them, they need to resonate deep within. It's not just formality. It's about feeling where your center is. It's about uh, if you cannot overcome the influences that are coming your way, uh, can you do a little bit of spiritual Aikido, maybe, right? The whole idea of of redirecting those energies and maybe flow with them for a while to see where you're going with it. Right, right. The, the the only the only problem I see with that is like yeah, making a deeper communion with the the higher archetypes, whatever pantheon that may be, right? And um if it's a constant barrage, right? Like we've seen recently, like an unrelenting barrage, then that becomes a little bit of a greater challenge and when that happens, I think I don't know, the the answer is just love level up right and remember love right it's very easy to 
live too much in your own head, perhaps during any sort of ritual or any sort of magical endeavor, because it becomes a very subjective and a very personal journey. But at the same time, if you are shaping your own journey and you're shaping the world accordingly to 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 these wishes that you have, um, I think remembering love is very, very important. Let a bit of sunshine into your heart, all right? Absolutely. Well said, man. And at the same time, like uh, bringing in the reference of the connection between the universal response to what we're mm -hmm. generating, uh, if we take a step back from the screen time and from all of the propaganda that's being um, mm -hmm. that we're, you know, under assault by in, in no, no finer terms, then we realize that that is an echo point. They, they are using, uh, I'm not going to say there, but uh, it's important to not be a servitor of this message that's coming out and then just reflecting its mm, frequency, uh, propensity, uh, amplitude back into the universal structure. We need to cut it off at ourselves. Right. Um mm. Master Ni Hua Ching once told me, he said that some people in the Freudian school said that it was very Carthagenic, uh, cathartic, cathartic, cathartic to release the emotions occasionally, like, you know, pound on the table and yell your head off or whatever. He said, no, 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 I don't think so. He said, you need to cut this off, cut off this tendency and redirect that energy to higher spiritual pursuits. Um, right. So I, I, I think in, in, in the greater sense, he's absolutely correct in that. It's one of the axioms of Chinese esoteric mysticism that we cut off the unnecessary reflection of this endless human opinion that's coming at us, right? Yeah. Some people are on the left side of the fence. Some people are on the right side of the fence. It's like walk the middle path. Um, and I'm not saying be a fence sitter, but what I'm saying is – learn to balance, mitigate, oscillate, and, and synthesize these energies. Uh, and in bringing it back again to the self, it's like, it's the, the more, the more selfish you become, essentially, it's like, how can I perfect my life and be of greater service to humanity? I think the less, the more, I think the more selfless you become, in fact, somehow. Mm. So you, you do need to, um, protect your energy from those who might attack it but at the same time you need to give forth that love that you had mentioned and mm. that becomes the frequency of light and that generates the peace i remember mm. one of the axioms that you had presented to me when i first met you was love light and peace and i thought mm. wow that's such a quintessential expression of how the method works right mm. um the mm. focus the mission and then the reward. It's 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 Volantia decreeism and possism mm. encoded by by other words. Mm. Um, it, uh, to build a little bit on what you said, and and this may be relevant to people who are watching this, and or maybe not, but uh, because of the uh, great upheaval that we have in the world right now, and and a lot of uh, angry emotions. Uh, I myself during this whole um, suite of um, well, uh, during the suit of, of cups, I've practiced not having an opinion because we're talking about emotions and we are constantly buffeted by a, an, an, an angry ocean, a stormy sea where we're more or less forced into a corner. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? You know, uh, are you going to follow this? Are you listening to these people? Uh, the so-called thought leaders and all of the interviews with people who are very upset. And uh, because that I felt was completely detracting from the work that we are doing and the challenge that we are undertaking right now, I decided to simply not have an opinion. And the idea is for me the basis of that is how can i possibly have an opinion that i don't know enough about i have to make it i have to create an opinion and hold on to that opinion well that creates a rigidity of mind and the rigidity is not my own it is imposed on me so i opted out and 
the opting out is that there is so much of there's so much information floating around and I don't have access to all of it. So why would I have an opinion when I'm not an expert? Well said, well said. And um, I would reiterate um, George Washington's famous quote. He said, uh, it's a matter of intelligence that you would defer your ultimate judgment if there's more data to be gained. Mm. And it, it's very um, succinct. And mm. he's basically saying what you just said, that you should defer from making your ultimate irrevocable. I mean, two adjectives there. Mm. Ultimate irrevocable decision if there is more data to be gained. And we've always mm. got an endless inflowing stream of data. And mm. some may argue that this would put you in a state of abeyance where you would become indecisive, but I disagree. I think mm. that it's a matter of wisdom mm. that we back away from the endless stream of static, as it were, and mm. focus on well, what's at hand for me. Mm. Isn't it that in, in partaking in the 100 Day Challenge, we've set up goals in advance. And it's like all of these other things are rising are like you said, a stormy sea of endless buffeting your mind and, and challenging you. You know, mm -hmm. do you have the resolution to keep the magician's will or intention, the magical method, mm -hmm. as it were, firmly mm -hmm. rooted within you? And can you make it through to the end? We've we're, we're nearly halfway there, right? We're quickly approaching the halfway mark, and we've almost finished. We're, we're more than three quarters of the way through the minor arcana and we're, we're just at the three quarter mark. And so we've only got a short jaunt to the end of the challenge. And I, I think it's wonderful that you mentioned that. Thank you for joining me on the hundred day magical challenge pathways of the Magi. Please like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the abodes of the future at Astra.